this chapter we're going to start our work with solving triangles. And the first uh, rule that we want to uh, use is called the law of sines. And the law of sines I've written over here. And it holds for any triangle ABC, not necessarily a right triangle, but any triangle whatsoever ABC. And remember how we label triangles. Uh, I've, I've written the vertices or angles with uh, the capital letters A, B, and C. And then side A is opposite angle A, side C is opposite angle C, and side B is opposite angle B. Well, the relationship between the angles and the sides in any triangle is this relationship. The sine of angle A is to side A as the sine of angle B is to side B as the sine of angle C is to side C. These three ratios are always equal in any triangle. And then we can also write them this way if it happens to be convenient. A over sine A is the same as B over sine B is the same as C over sine C. So these are constants in every triangle whatsoever. And this rule is called the law of sines, and to see where it comes from or the derivation of it, you're going to have to look in the book. What we want to do on the videotapes is just work a few problems that involve the law of sines. Here's our first one. Suppose we have a triangle in which angle A is 50 degrees, angle B is 60 degrees, and side A is 36 kilometers. We want to find the length, so the length of side C. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw in a triangle for reference. It doesn't have to be accurate. I just need something to refer to. I'm going to label the angles A, B, and C, and the sides uh, A, B, and C also. Now let's see, angle A is 50 degrees, so right here I'm going to put 50 degrees. Angle B is 60 degrees, so here I'll put 60 degrees. And then side A is 36 kilometers. So I'm left uh, looking for side C and also side B. So in this problem, though, we're asked simply to find side C. So I want to find the length of side C, and if I'm going to use the law of sines, I need to have um, a side and the, a and the angle opposite it uh, in order to use the law of sines. So the first thing I'm going to do is find angle C. And angle C will be 180, subtract 50, plus 60, which is 180 minus 110, or 70 degrees. So I'm going to put in over here that angle C is 70 degrees. Then, now I'm ready to find side C, and I do it this way. C is to the sine of C as, and all I have to do is pick one other of these ratios to fill in, and I need one where I have the angle and the side opposite, so I'm going to use this ratio right here. Um, A is to the sine of A. So here's my law of sines right here. Now I'll fill in the numbers that I have. I'm looking for side C. I have angle C, which is 70 degrees. I just found that. Side A is 36, and angle A is 50 degrees, so sine 50 degrees. So here's an equation to solve that the solution to which will give me the length of side C. So I have C is to the sine of angle C as A is to the sine of angle A. So you see I have one of the ratios partially completed in, and I need another ratio completely filled in in order to use the law of sines to solve for one of the parts in this triangle. That's why I chose over here A over sine A, because I have side A and angle A both, both the side opposite the angle and the angle itself. Now to solve this for side C, what I do is multiply both sides by sine 70 degrees. When I do, I get this. C is equal to 36 times the sine of 70 degrees, all divided by the sine of 50 degrees. Now that's 36 times, and I've worked this out. Let's see. Sine 70 is 0 0.9397 to four decimal places, and the sine of 50 is 0 0.7660. Now, if I do this arithmetic on a calculator and round to two significant digits, I end up with 44 kilometers for the length of side C. So side C turns out to be 44 kilometers, and that's this side right here. So I'd say C is equal to 44. So that's, a, that's how we use the law of sines to find uh, one of the missing sides in a triangle. Now, if we look back to this original triangle and see what it is that we're given, Notice that we were given this angle, this angle, and this side, and this side right here is not included between these two angles. So in geometry, if we were to look back in geometry, that is similar to that 
angle angle side theorem that we use to prove two triangles congruent to each other. If we had two angles and a not included side um, in one triangle equal to two angles and a not included side in the other triangle, then we could say that all the rest of the parts of those triangles were equal. Well, the same thing holds in trigonometry for solving a triangle. If we're given this information about a triangle, we can use the law of sines to solve for one of the missing sides. The, uh, this angle right here is solved for just by using the fact that the sum of the angles is 180 degrees, and I could solve now for side B if I wanted to, also using the law of sines. Let's go on and look at another problem that also involves using the law of sines to solve for the missing parts in a triangle. Suppose B is 13.4 degrees, C is 24.8 degrees, and side A is 315 centimeters. Now again, I'm going to draw a triangle for reference here. And again, it doesn't have to be accurate. That's angle A, angle B, and angle C. Now I'm going to fill in what I'm given. Angle B is 13.4 degrees. So here is 13.4 degrees. Angle C is 24.8 degrees. So there's 24.8 degrees. And side A is 315 centimeters. So 315 centimeters. Now, if I was looking at this from a geometry point of view, I would notice that I have an angle, a side, and an angle given to me in this triangle. And remember, in geometry, that was that angle-side-angle -angle theorem that allowed us to prove two triangles were congruent. This was like a set of minimum information that you would need in one triangle equal to that same information in another triangle to say that all the rest of the parts were equal also. Well, in Triangles and trigonometry, being given this information in a triangle means all the rest of the parts in the triangle are solvable for. So let's see, I can solve for side C, and I can also solve for side B. So I want to find all the missing parts. Let's start with angle A. So if I, I can find angle A right here pretty simply with just subtraction. Angle A is 180 degrees subtract 24.8 plus 13.4 degrees. Now if I do that arithmetic, 180 subtract 24.8 plus 13.4, this will come out to be 141.8 degrees. So angle A is 141.8 degrees. Okay, next I can uh, solve for either side C or side B using the law of sines. So what I want to do is take the, um, well, it doesn't really matter which one I do. Let's see, I think I'll try side C. So to solve for side C, I'll use this ratio. C is to the sine of 24.8 as, okay, I'll have to use the ratio that's filled in here, 315 is to the sine of 141.8 degrees. Now I'll multiply both sides by sine 24.8 and I'll get C equals 315 times the sine of 24.8 degrees all divided by the sine of 141.8 degrees. Now I've worked this out on the calculator and this comes out to be 214 is that right? 214 centimeters to three significant digits. So that's side C, 214 centimeters. Okay, the only thing the left, left then to solve for is side B, and to solve for side B, I'll use the law of sines again. So over here, let's write side B, and what I'll write is B is to the sine of the angle opposite, which is 13 degrees, that is B is to the sine of 13.4 as 315 is to the sine of 141.8 degrees. Multiply both sides by this and I get B is equal to 315 sine 13.4 degrees. That's divided by the sine of 141.8 degrees. And I've worked that out on the calculator, and that comes out to be 118 centimeters. So side B is 118 centimeters. That's this right here, 118 centimeters. So you can see, again, I used the law of sines to solve for 
one of the missing sides. First I found this angle right here, and then I just went through and by using the law of sines found side C, then I used the law of sines again and found side B. Let's go on now to the next problem, which is a word problem, or uh, application problem. Let's take a look at it. Okay, problem number three, uh, kind of a long problem. We have a man is flying a hot air balloon in a straight line at a constant rate of five feet per second while keeping it at a constant altitude. As he approaches the parking lot of a market, he notices that the angle of depression from his balloon to a friend's car in the parking lot is 35 degrees. A minute and a half later, after flying directly over his friend's car, he looks back to see the friend getting into the car and observes the angle of depression now is 36 degrees. At that time, what's the distance between him and his friend? Give your answer to the nearest foot. Okay, so what we're going to do is draw a triangle that describes the situation right here. And we'll start, and again, these triangles don't have to be accurate. They just give us something to label, that to look at, and then uh, from that we can apply our law of signs or whatever it is we happen to be using. But let's say here's the hot air balloon right here, and he's traveling in a straight line. And let's just say at this point right here, he looks down and sees that the angle of depression to somebody's car in the parking lot is 35 degrees. So there's 35 degrees. Now he flies the hot air balloon at a constant altitude directly over the person's car to a certain point over here and looks back then and sees that the angle of depression now is 36 degrees. Now we want to know at that point right here what's the distance between the person in the hot air balloon and the person in the car down here. So let's call that x. So we're looking for this distance x in this triangle right here. Now I have, I'm, I'm looking for x, I have the um, angle opposite x, I have this angle, what I need is one more side in this triangle and I'll be able to solve it. Well if I read the problem it says he's traveling at five feet per second and it's a minute and a half later from the time he first notices the friend's car till he flies over it and then looks back. Well a minute and a half is 90 seconds times five feet per second is 450 feet. So the, the side, this, the length of this side in the triangle is 450 feet. Let's see, I think I'll solve for this angle right here first. Let's call this angle theta. Uh, theta is equal to 180 degrees, subtract 35 degrees, plus 36 degrees. So 180 minus 35 degrees plus 36 degrees, and that's going to come out to be 109 degrees. So theta is equal to 109 degrees. That's this angle right here. Now I'm just going to simply set up my law of sines. X is to the sine of 35 as 450 is to the sine of 109. So here's my law of sines. X is to the sine of 35 degrees as 450 is to the sine of 109 degrees. So I've used my law of sines to set this up. Now all I have to do is multiply both sides by sine 35 and solve for x. x is equal to 450 times the sine of 35 degrees, all divided by the sine of 109 degrees. Do that real quickly on a calculator, and that comes out to be 273 feet. So the distance from him to his friend in the car is x, which is 273 three feet at this point when he looks back and sees that the angle of depression is 36 degrees. Okay, let's go on and work another application problem that also will involve the law of sines. Uh, figure 13 is a diagram that shows how Colleen estimates the height of a tree that is on, on the side of a stream. She stands at a point. She stands at point A facing the tree and finds the angle of elevation from A to the top of the tree to be 51 degrees. Uh, then she turns 105 degrees and walks 25 feet to point B where she measures the angle between her path and the base of the tree. She finds that angle to be 44 degrees. Use this information to find the height of the tree. Well, I think in your book this is actually called figure 15. Um, this is, I have it figure 13 here on this problem, but when you look in the book and see this problem there, it's going to be figure uh, 15, I think. But anyways, let's get a picture of this and this together and see if we can fill in some of this information. Okay, she stands at point A facing the tree and finds the angle of elevation from A to the top of the tree to be 51 degrees. Okay, so she's standing here at this point A and she looks up to the top of the tree and finds out that the angle of elevation that is right here 
is 51 degrees. She then turns 105 degrees and walks 25 feet to point B. So here she is facing the tree, right here, and then she turns 105 degrees and walks 25 feet, yeah, 25 feet to point B, where she measures the angle between her path and the base of the tree. She finds that angle to be 44 degrees. So that's this angle right here, and that's 44 degrees. Okay, so what do I have? I have this angle right here, but that's not part of this triangle. In this triangle, this lower triangle that's on the ground, I have two angles and the side included between them. So I have enough information to solve for any part of this triangle that I want. Now I'm looking for the height of the tree, which is this distance right here. I want to find this distance h, the height of the tree, this is a right angle right here. I have this angle, 51 degrees, between this side and this side in this right triangle that is up vertically like this. So if I can find another side in that triangle, I'll be able to just use regular trigonometry to find everything else. So I'm first going to solve for this distance x, which is the length of this side right here. So let's draw this triangle out here a little bit. Looks like this. This angle right here is 44 degrees. This angle here is 105. This is 25. And this is x. So first, let's find this angle theta. Theta is equal to 180 degrees. Subtract 105 degrees plus 44 degrees. Now that turns out to be 105 plus 44. Let me look on my paper here, and that is 31 degrees. So angle theta up here is 31 degrees. Put little degree symbols here. So now I can use my law of sines. x is to the sine of 44. As 25 is to the sine of 31. So I'll solve this for x. x is equal to 25 sine 44 degrees, all divided by sine 31 degrees, and that comes out to be 33.719. I'm going to keep a few extra decimal places right here just for a minute. Okay, now I'm going to take this x and let's go into this top vertical right triangle and see what it looks like. That right triangle, if I draw it Looking straight on from the side, this is what I have. This side is 33.719, and this angle right here is 51 degrees. So I want to find h, the height of that triangle. So what trigonometric ratio do I use in a right triangle that relates the side opposite with the side adjacent? The answer is tangent. Tangent of 51 degrees will be equal to h divided by 33.719. So I solve that for h. h is equal to 33.719 times the tangent of 51 degrees. Now I work that on a calculator, and that comes out to be, to the nearest foot, 42 feet. So that tree is 42 feet high, and the way we solve this problem is by first taking this bottom triangle right here, which is not a right triangle, using the law of sines to find this side. This side right here is also in this vertical right triangle. So once I have this side in this right triangle right here, I know I have this angle 51 degrees, then it's easy to solve for the height of the tree using just regular right triangle trigonometry. So there's four problems that um, will give you some experience using the law of sines to solve for the missing parts in a triangle.